Good morning, YouTubers. It's Uncle Lo of uh, Uncle Lo's Next Adventure. Um, what an amazing day. Can you see the actual weather behind me? But what's even cooler is if you think that's a, a background that's been edited in for the picture. No, that's the freaking real thing. That's actually the link uh, wheel behind me. And uh, super cool that we've been able to stay for a few days so far at uh, in beautiful Las Vegas for the F1. Uh, the difference with uh, today is Uncle Lowe is going to share you a little bit of uh, insight to my past and my grandfather. So a lot of uh, people don't know is my grandfather on my dad's side uh, owned a, a corner store on Renfrew Street in, in Vancouver, very close to the Pacific National Exhibition, the, the P&E. And uh, with the P&E, as you guys know, is a big spectacle uh, every year where people came from all around the world just to kind of uh, come and enjoy uh, some of the, the sights, sounds and uh, rides and uh, obviously just our fair. But uh, the other um, mainstay of uh, the, this area here, Hastings Park, was actually the racetrack. It's a horse racetrack. And uh, I absolutely love uh, this place because, uh, unfortunately, good or bad, uh, I grew up here for, for many years of uh, indirect education on <laughs> not only just gambling and uh, just watching uh, kind of how some seniors and adults and stuff uh, kind of really enjoy uh, the pastime of uh, gambling. Maybe it's in the DNA of uh, the Chinese or just Asians in general because uh, they're pretty crazy, right? Not just in the casinos, but uh, at the horse track uh, too. Uh, which brings me, um, you know, what does that mean? Uh, well, actually, I not only enjoy F1 racing, I enjoy horse racing and I correlate the two together. I really think that my, my, my two understanding of the two uh, sports here are related, but at the same time is I, I truly understand when you're um, a race car driver, your engine, your Ferrari, your Honda engine, um, your McLaren uh, engine, right? That's something that will, they, they, you, you have a parameter with, right? And you're gonna go that speed. And when you're racing, it's about the driver, um, interaction but uh, in horse racing it's the opposite because you're dealing with horses animals right just like us just like uh athletes right we, we lose energy um you know maybe the race is a, a little bit different some some horses like to, to race from catch up from behind to try to race to the front some people need a, a another horse that just as fast as them uh, called a marker so that they can kind of pace each other and then make sure that uh, you know they can go down the track at, at a faster rate and you know there, there's a whole psychology behind uh, um, horse racing right and I just wanted to share some key points so that if you do come to Vegas or you go down to California or a chance to kind of maybe go to Del Mar and, 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 and watch some races um, you know, you can just spend a couple bucks to have some fun just to enjoy um, a, a little bit of betting. And it doesn't have to be big because we're not talking about trying to win thousands of dollars unless you multiply and put in 1,000 to try to make a 1,000 in a change, right? Because um, if you've got a hot horse in there or a horse that uh, should be stronger than the field, generally the class will work itself out just like UFC uh, I call it there's levels to this game right um, and, and in horse racing there are levels too and the only difference is sometimes you get a bump sometimes some get tired some of them might step funny in a, a spot there might have taken a wrong turn and slipped might have spooked a horse right so again it, it's all about uh, animals but I just want to do this short clip and let's see how uh, how fast we can go through kind of just the, the betting process. So I'm gonna show this a little bit later on the clip, but what this is is usually when you go to a sports uh, race book or a sports um, uh, betting uh, area is, is you get kind of a, a betting form, just tells you what the odds are, just when you guys go see uh, NBA game, right? Uh, they, they'll give you the odds and, and everything up front. And you can basically bet a few ways, right? When you wager, you can wager just a, um, the position or the podium uh, that that horse stands on. So you can bet up to, uh, I'm gonna think, okay, show is, is third, second or first, place is second or first, and then win, 
it's just a win outright. And obviously, uh, the odds will will, will work um, close there. The other betting, and I'm just going to stick with this. There's other also very creative ways you can bet uh, horse races, uh, multiple races, and what on. But uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, box and quinella. And Quinella is basically choosing two horses. So if I think number one and number two are going to come uh, either first or second in that order there, I can uh, play them one and two without boxing and just say that means one has to come first, two has to come second. And if you come in, you get a set of odds. If you box it or the Quinella of that, that means that you can actually take the reciprocating number or the horse and that will correspond. So then if two comes in first and one comes in second, then you will still uh, net overall win. And, and that's quite a lot of fun too, right? You, I, I definitely uh, would spend a little bit more on the box uh, scenario here because you just don't know, right? Because if you th kind of throw in maybe a horse that's not the hottest horse and you want to do a little bit of a, a long shot in there, if they come in just a step below or maybe they... they, they they tromp over the uh, the person the the, the horse that uh, had the highest rating or the the one that was slated to win, you would lose in that scenario. So I, I usually like to protect my bet uh, when it comes there, and you know just put a few bucks. And like I said, you know it doesn't have to be expensive. If you've got nine races, you don't have to race all nine races. You don't have to bet on all nine races. You can bet on four or five. And the average is usually anywhere from two to five dollars. Um, and if you're a heavier better, right, that you want to be a bit creative, I usually say from six dollars to ten dollars is kind of that sweet range per race. So you can kind of go through about a hundred dollars worth of, uh, you know, uh, play here and really you know, uh, just get a lot of boatload of fun. So I'm going to show uh, in my talking points here uh, just a few things that I'm going to highlight. And I'm going to show it on the screen here so that you can see sequentially, um, you know, what you need to kind of uh, uh, kind of go through when you do a betting. And again, the reason why Uncle Lowe shows this is not to show, you know, I can have so much fun, is to reduce the anxiety of doing something new. Right. Just remember, if you've never done this before and you go and step up to the booth and say, I'd like to make some bets, please. And they're like, OK, tell me, blah, blah, blah. And they're, they're just trying to punch away. And there's like five people lining up. Your heart rate's going to go up. Right. Your breathing is going to get a bit more shallow. So, you know, it'll be quite uh, interesting to really know, um, you know, when you go up there to say, hey, look, I want to place one and two on a box quinella you'd look like a freaking rock star. So, you know, uh, just take my little tip here today and hopefully you can apply it to your next horse race. I'm gonna show you some uh, other tips that I really look at, what track conditions are, you know, what kind of uh, time sections did they run? Maybe they are, you know, like I said, there's levels. There's Formula One, Formula Two, Formula Three, Formula Four. In horse racing there is too, and usually they grade that by purses. So, for example, if a horse was racing in a $40,000 purse, um, they're traditionally rated um, very low at that point or maybe kind of an intermediate horse because they've not simply won three races or been on the podium. But maybe they've raced enough in those races that the caliber of uh, horses they had there within a deviation of maybe 30 or maybe 10 seconds within that kind of uh, race in there, you know, they, they might have some flexibility to put them in, right? It, you know, because sometimes you just put uh, long shots in there because you need to fill up the race. Uh, what I also like to look to is the um, kind of how many horses are in the race. Simply, you can't beat mathematics. Uh, if you have a horse race where there's five horses there and you get to box Quinella two of those five horses, you're way better off than looking at an 11-horse race and trying to fi figure out which two horses there are going to come first and second. So it's really, really interesting because this is all about odds, all about numbers. At the end of the day, it's all about the animals, though, that will be uh, running and actually um, kind of guiding our entertainment. So we'll have a lot of fun here. So I just this is uh, Uncle Lowe's 10-minute uh, clip today, and actually we'll make it right on the 10 minutes on the dot. So I just wanted to take this uh, last 15 seconds to really, truly thank uh my friend Steve for this trip uh, 
and, and kind of just spending the time so far to kind of challenge me to kind of look at F1 a bit differently. Uh, just using a bit of that IQ, connecting with people last night was absolutely amazing. To actually watch the race, to listen to it, the, the, the visceral effect, the, the oral effect, is, is you, you can't put a price on that. But uh, more importantly, it shows that, you know, I've had actually a lot of IQ in a lot of different areas. When I talk to different people or when I hear things, I have empathy for them too because there's a lot of anxiety going around. And there's actually more anxiety that goes around when you're judged by people. And I'm just going to end with a little bit of a, a, a kind of a, a talk that I heard yesterday that was a bit discouraging. And I could have let that discouragement ruin my night, but uh, I, I decided that, hey, look, have some empathy for them because I was in the same position before. I literally was listening to, you know, uh, a younger girl and not to say she has more or less experience, but tell a, a, a grown man that's probably lived through some of the experiences, good and bad, that um, he was placed within a group to say, hey, look, in your generation there, you guys do this, this and this. In your generation there, you don't listen to therapy. In your generation there, you're not in tune with your emotions and your feelings. So base it on the facts. So for me, it was really, really agitating to hear because the words were great, right? When you live through life and, uh, you know, you hear the words and you kind of resonate and say, yeah, you know, part of anxiety is the lack of doing things or executing on things. So when you tell someone to do something or you tell someone that you're feeling this way or you loop them up in the same generation, well, guess what? You're not going to get a good response. And when you start challenging people and saying, well, you can't really spawn that quick or maybe you don't have a response. Now you're just agitating and uh, putting people in a bad position. And now that's based on emotion. So I just want to correct the Chelsea's of the world here that I, I heard and not the Karen's of the world today. Because uh, for me and Uncle Lo, I, have, I will have compassion for others today. I had to put people first in the morning, kind of meditate a little bit on uh, what happened last night and really truly understand that, you know what, we can't be perfect. The Chelsea's of the world can't expect others to be perfect. The Uncle Lo's of the world can't be perfect. I may make jokes that have pissed people off. I may make jokes, but at the end of the day is uh, my intentions are good. My principles are solid. And hopefully the values that I have uh, will kind of resonate with the rest. Uh, yesterday was a boatload of fun because hopefully I have some subscribers that uh, will not just be subscribers because I gave them a pamphlet. Will truly be a, um, uh, a subscriber because they resonated with the PTSD message. They want to learn a little bit about more anxiety. They maybe had a good laugh because Uncle Lo put, him in a position, uh, put himself in a position that he hasn't done uh, in a long, long time. But all I know is that I'm fully capable, so is the rest, and we just all need to live by moment, by day. But at the end of the day is make sure that your self-development is higher than your perspective and your judgment on others, okay? So for me, from Uncle Lo to you and for my family, please press that subscribe. And if you like this channel,